Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. We at the Debi Islamic Association would like to welcome you to a new series of Ramadan Reminders. In this series, we will be speaking about Chapter 12, Surah Yusuf. We now begin with the dua which is recommended for Laylatul Qad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma. Innaka afun to hibbul afwa fafu anni. O Allah, certainly you are the one who pardons and you love to pardon. So pardon me. Let's remind ourselves of some of the benefits of reading Surah Yusuf. It is just as reading any part of Al Quran, it gives us barakat or lengthening of the day. What this means is that the 24 hours remains the same, but the time itself lasts longer. If you remember, sometimes it happens to all of us, where by the time you move, make a couple turns, half the day is finished. And then one or two items again and the entire day is gone. Giving barakah to a day means that the exact opposite of this happens, where we have a lot more time in order to complete whatever positive activities we have. Another benefit of reading Surah Yusuf, and this comes from a hadith in which there was an old man who approached the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complaining of two problems. With age, he complained about the fact that his tongue became harsh with the words that he said. And his heart became hard. So the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, and remember, the Nabi never said anything unless it was guided by Allah. So his reply was, read the Alif Lam Ra Surahs. So reading these will solve those problems, will remove the harshness of the tongue and soften the heart. And what are these surahs? Chapter 10, which is Surah Yunus. Chapter 11, Surah Hud. Chapter 12, Surah Yusuf, which is this one that we are discussing in this month, inshallah. Chapter 14, Surah Ibrahim. And these four surahs were all named after Prophets of Allah. And Surah 15, Al-Hijj, the stone land. As we build a better understanding of Prophet Yusuf, let's look at a family tree starting with Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who Allah sent to us in the 6th century CE. And in the Arabian Peninsula, if we trace back, we will find that the Prophet who came before him was Prophet Ismail or Ishmael and his father Ibrahim. And of course, before Ibrahim, there were many great prophets. But from Ibrahim, we will, following the family tree, we will also see his other son, his younger son, Ishaq or Isaac. And from Isaac came his son Jacob or Yaqub, or also known as Israel. So the descendants of Yaqub were called the Israelites. And we'll find from Bani Israel or the children of Israel came Prophet Yusuf So Yaqub came in the 6th century BCE and we can trace there were many great prophets coming down from Prophet Yusuf eventually ending with Isa in the 1st century coming here. Let's now look at how this surah was revealed. There are many ulama who believe that this surah was revealed in one flowing order, in one sitting. And let's look at why it was revealed. Now there are many reasons and two of the main reasons are A. That the Muslims at that point in time were under a lot of stress and they were looking for some sort of upliftment. And this story was one of the ways that Allah SWT had, had given to them as a gift. And this you can sp see about this when we reach the third eye of the surah. And another reason was because this was a test 
by the non-Muslims to see whether or not Muhammad sallallahu was really a prophet. Now look at when it was revealed. It was right after the year of sorrow, the year in which there were many tariffs that were applied to the Muslims of Makkah, so much so that they weren't able to get food, to trade, right? there was great hunger, and there were three main incidents that happened during this time. One of which was the story of Taif, and then the others were about Abu Talib and Bibi Khadija. So if we recall that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was a baby with his parents, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had removed or taken back his father Abdullah, even before he was given birth to. But he left him with his mother, Amina. And then at a young age, Allah took Amina from him and he didn't leave him alone. He left him with his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. So even though Allah tested our Prophet from a young age onwards, he kept reassuring him and giving him support. And then later on, Abdul Muttalib, his grandfather passed and Allah SWT left him with Abu Talib, his uncle. So, Abu Talib stayed with him until he became an adult. And by the age of 25, he got married to baby Khadija. Right. So, uh, between Abu Talib and baby Khadija, they were the main supports to our Nabi wasallam, in giving him reassurance and acceptance and protection. And in this year of sorrow, both of them passed. Let's now look at the heading of the surah as we begin. If we look on the right hand side, we can see it tells us how many ayahs or how many verses there are, which is 111. And then it tells us it's 12. 12 indicates that if we open the Quran, it is the 12th chapter of the Quran. And next it, it gives us the name of that chapter, Surah Yusuf. It also tells us where the surah was revealed. In this case, it says Makki. So it means that this surah was revealed in Makkah. Now a Makkan surah gives us certain information. These surahs generally were speaking about fundamentals and beliefs of Islam, the basics, and about Islam and individuals. Now, at that point in time, being in Makkah, who opposed the Muslims? Generally, it was their own non-Muslim family members that they grew up with. Let's go back to the header, and on the extreme left, we will see that there are 12 ruku, or 12 sections. And as we bring up Ayah 6, the ending of it here, we can see the ending of a section is indicated where there is a little ayn, above the full stop, telling us that we have come to the end of one of the 12 sections of the surah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. And as our surah begins, let's recall a couple little things here. We'll have a little trivia time. Do you remember how many surahs there are in the entire of Quran? Correct, 114. And out of those, how many surahs do not begin with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim? Just one. And which surah is that? Surah Tawbah. And when we look at this phrase here, there are how many letters? That's right, 19 letters. And each letter that we read of Al Quran, we gain 10 hasana. So that means if we just read this statement alone, we will get 19 times 10, 190 hasanas or blessings. We now begin the actual surah with the first section where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
Alif Lam Ro. And these letters, when they appear in this format, they, we see the exact name of each letter. These are called broken letters, or in Arabic, Al Muqatta'at, which actually means that they are mystic letters because no one except Allah SWT knows the exact meaning of what this is. When we look at these letters, they form the beginning of 29 surahs, just as we have 29 letters of the Arabic alphabet. And some of them are formed in terms of a family, as we've discussed previously with the Alif Lam Ro surahs, there are Alif Lam Mim surahs, and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now challenges mankind. Because at that point in time, the Arabs were considered to be great linguists and, and poets in their language. And he says in Surah Hu, chapter 13, If you and Jinn and all the help that you can get can come together, see if you can produce a whole Quran similar to this. And of course, they failed. So later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a second challenge in Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 88, where he says, if you can't produce the whole Quran, then produce just 10 chapters, which are of equivalence to the Holy Quran. And of course, they failed. And one more time, he gave that challenge. This occurred three times. The last one being in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 23 where he says, at least produce one chapter. And of course, mankind could not do that. What usually follows them will be a description of Al-Quran, as we can see in the rest of this ayah. Alif Lam Ro Tilka Ayatul Kitab Mubin these are the ayahs, the verses, the proofs, the signs, the miracles of the kitab, of the book, this book, the Quran, which is Mubin, which is completely clear. And recognize that when we speak about it being clear, it states the facts. It gives predictions, it lays down the laws and the ordinances, it clarifies things. That's why you can see in all the Muslims throughout the world that there is one Quran with all the words being exactly the same. And also note that after the Al Muqatta'at, the Alif Lam Ro, comes a sentence speaking about Al Quran. We've now come to the end of part one, the introduction of Surah Yusuf, and tomorrow, inshallah, we'll be continuing into part two. We now end with the dua. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. O Lord, accept this service from us, for indeed you are all hearing, all knowing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.